Welcome to John Gets Games. As selected by the voting level supporters of our Patreon page, today I'll be reviewing Coracle. This is a tile laying game, vaguely reminiscent of Scrabble, but instead of letters, you have various shapes and colors on the tiles, and instead of thinking about your vocabulary, you spend all your time trying to figure out the best placement for your tiles on the board. First I'll go through some gameplay turns to show you how the game plays and the various rules that go into it, and then I'll jump into my review. So here's the starting setup for a game of Quirkle. Whether you're playing two to four players, you just begin with an empty board and each player takes six random tiles out of the bag. I'm going to explain how the game plays by actually going through various turns, so let's jump into the left player's turn. As you can see, the tiles are made up of various symbols and colors. There are six different symbols and six different colors, and there are also three of each identical tile in the bag. As you can see, there are two blue circles right here. Since the table begins empty, it's up to our first player to start putting tiles down. And there are two legal ways to do that. You either put tiles down that are all the same shape but different colors, or you put tiles down that are all the same color but different shapes. If we look over here, we see they have two of these clovers and we have two greens, so they could play either of those two sets. There doesn't really seem to be a reason to go either way, so they'll go ahead and put these two into the middle of the table. After they've played tiles, a player will score points for how they played them. In the beginning, it's very simple. We see there are two tiles down here. That's just one point per tile, so the left-hand player gets two points. I'll explain the more interesting scoring rules as we get to them. You can track the points any way you want to by writing them down on a pad or something, but I'm going to go ahead and use this free app I had for my iPad. And lastly, you always drop to six tiles. It's now the right-hand player's turn, and they must play off of the board state that we have out here. We have an orange clover and a red clover, and so that gives them a couple different options. As one example, they could take this tile here, and they could put it either on top of or below this clover here. And they can do that because they would match the same color, but not the same symbol. So obviously, you would not be able to put this here because neither the symbol or color match. The better option for our right player is to take these two tiles here, and you always have to make a single uh, word or line of tiles, but you could split it up. So I could do this if I wanted to, or I could put them down like here. We'll go ahead and put them like this for now. Now the right-hand player scores. They get one, two, three points. So it's our left-hand player's turn, and they have a couple options. They could just take this diamond here and put it up at the top here, and they would get four points for that. They could put it here because yeah, of the same color and just get two points. That's not really good. But let's see, they could also do a thing like take this circle and put it here because these are the same shape but different color and they would only get two points for that. That's not great. I think what the left hand player really wants to do is take both of these right here and they can put it up here and here. So we're adding into this red line here but we're also creating a line of diamonds. So here's where scoring gets interesting. When you score the tiles that you place, you actually score every single line that you added to. So essentially we would get one, two, three, four points for this here, but then we would also get one, two points for this line here, essentially scoring this tile twice, and this whole thing would be worth six points for the turn. Now it's the right-hand player's turn, and once again, there are lots of different options they could do, but I think that they're gonna take these two diamonds here and add them like this. Now, of course, they could add them like this if they wanted to, and they would get four points. However, if they put them like this, or of course, like this, then they're going to get one, two, three, four, five points for playing it. This is also interesting because we now have a dead spot on the table where no tile will ever be able to be placed because by going here it would break one of those two rules. You would not be able to have all the same color or all the same shape in this line. So as the table gets bigger, as these tiles all get bigger and bigger, you're going to start to have weird holes and spots that really force the tiles to go in all sorts of different directions. So now it's the left player's turn again, and I get to show you a pretty creative play. You can take these two tiles here, and they actually fit right here legally, because we have all the same shape of different color here, and all the same shape of different color here, and then this is the same color. So the way we score this is we get one, two, three points, because this is a new tile. We get four or five points, because these are the same, and then we added these as well. So that's six, seven points total for just adding these two tiles. It's the right-hand player's turn, and they've got several good options. They could take these two tiles right here and put them like so, so they would get one, two, three, four, five points. Uh, this is a good way to use tiles that are identical but not in the same line, because obviously you would not be able to do this or this, because you would have two red circles. Um, now, despite the fact that we have all these good options, I am going to do something else. The other thing you can do on your turn, besides putting tiles out into the board, is you can discard any number of them uh, away and then draw that same number of tiles into your hand. And this uses your entire turn, but this is a thing you can do if you really don't have good options or if in an unlikely circumstance where you can't play a single tile from your hand. 
So since there isn't a single purple or yellow tile out, let's just say the right-hand player decides to discard these two tiles here, and they draw two more randomly from the bag. They go into their hand, and that would finish their turn. Again, obviously, the right-hand player had way better uh, things to do, but I just wanted to show that mechanism. And now the left-hand player gets to show you something special, and this is the last rule that I need to show you, and that is the quirkle, which is obviously the name of the game. You perform a quirkle when you create a line of all six of the same color but different uh, shape or all six of the same shape a different color. So they can take these two shapes here and they are red and they're the last two that would fit into this line. They slide them in here and first of all they get six points, that one, two, three, four, five, six for making this line. But secondly you get a six point bonus every time you do a corkle. So this is six plus six or a twelve point move. And from this point on the players would just keep playing, adding tiles or discarding if they can't make anything work, and they're going to go until this entire big bag of tiles is completely exhausted. At that point, they're going to use every single one of the tiles in their hands, and the first player to place their last tile down is going to get another six-point bonus, and that will immediately end the game. At that point, you would see which player has the most points. Obviously, it's going to be nothing like these scores, and that person is going to be the winner. For my review of Corkle, I'll be discussing each item on this list, starting at the top and working my way down. So let's start with those positives. And the first of these has to do with the number of things that you're actually thinking about on a given turn. It's surprising considering how very simple the rule set is for this game. Uh, you need to think about the tactical issues of maximizing point values, you know, trying to hit multiple rows to get uh, each tile scored multiple times. It's kind of like a multiplier. But there's definite strategic things to keep in mind here, which is not at first apparent. You're going to find yourself hoarding certain tiles because you're really close to getting a corkle. You might be like one tile away, and you want to go for those corkles. Getting six extra points is a pretty big deal. But the flip side is you might find yourself hoarding too many tiles that are all so close to corkles and just playing a single tile each turn, and you are not going to win that way. I've, I've played full games like that, a couple of them, and just it never worked. You might get a couple more corkles than other people, but on average, they will outscore you because they're playing two to three tiles on a lot of turns, and that just eclipses those six-point bonuses that you're going to be getting. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is as you're kind of hoarding some tiles, because you do need to do that, you still need to go for some corkles. You can't win without them. Uh, you also need to protect the corkle that you're going towards. You need to try and build away from it so you're not giving your opponents opportunities to play tiles that will suddenly make that corkle impossible to play because it's very easy to create dead zones on the board where no tile can go down. And you also don't want to give away the fact that you are trying to protect that corkle over there. So there's all those things to think, keep in mind. Plus you're also thinking about the fact that there are three of each tile in the bag and you can count it relatively easy. You know, you need that one red circle and you see one is out in the board. Does your opponent have one? Does your opponent have two? There's that great moment when your opponent will play one of those somewhere else on the board and you're just thinking, did they have both of them? Are they going to be holding on to it? Did they play that because they know that I'm hunting for them and I'm going to see that? And oh, There's definite mind games that you can get into when you're playing this very, very simple game. So I was very pleasantly surprised with the amount of interesting decisions there were. Positive number two has to do with how incredibly accessible and easy to teach this game is. The rules are so short that you can pretty much just start playing and teach as you go. You just have to tell people there are six colors, six shapes. A legal play is all the same color but different shapes or all the same shape but different colors. You're like 10 seconds in and you could just start playing. People play the, the tiles down and you show them how they score and the next person goes. Within three or four turns, you'll definitely have the opportunity to play a situation where you score multiple rows and at that point you explain it to people but you're playing the game. You don't need to have a long teaching session, which means this game plays very well with people who don't like long rule sessions, specifically people who would not even classify themselves as gamers or people who play games very rarely. Oftentimes, five minutes is even too much of explanation for rules. They just want to get in and see how the game's going, and this is a game that definitely works for that. And fortunately, I've seen it work for those people and people who like longer, more in-depth strategy games, people who really call themselves gamers. This game hits the entire spectrum. Its accessibility is really impressive. So now let's shift into neutral number one, which has to do with the pattern recognition that you're going to have to do in order to be good at Quirkle. I've taught this game and some people just get it right away. You teach them the rules and they just see all the patterns. It just works for their brain. But then I've also taught it for other people, like myself, where it takes a little while before seeing those patterns really becomes an easy thing to do. You need to know where your legal placements are before you can decide which one is best for you in the short term and long term. 
and I found that it took me probably two or three full games of Coracle before I felt comfortable quickly seeing all my different options. And that might be a problem for some people. It was a little bit frustrating for me, honestly, the first game. I felt like everybody else was getting it, and I just wasn't. But once I played it two or three times, I saw it, and I just really fell in love with everything else that was going on in the game. So this is a bit of a warning, honestly, that some people are going to get it. If you're one of those people who just don't get it right away, I really suggest you give the game a couple tries. I think that your brain will figure it out and you will get on to really enjoying the meat of the game. And now for neutral number two, which has to do with luck and randomness. This is a tile laying game where you'll be pulling tiles out of a bag so you can't get away from the fact that luck could influence the game to a certain degree or another. But I found that the games last long enough that you take enough turns that it seems like it smooths out the luck curve to the point where everybody seems to get lucky enough times to the point where skill is the thing that shines. It does seem like the person who is most experienced or just best at the game wins the game more often than their opponents. And I think that is a good thing. You will probably have situations though where you are just, you just need three different tiles that would give you three different coracles and why aren't those tiles coming to you? And then your opponent gets it and they place it down and they say, oh, I just, I pulled the other tile I needed for that last turn. And you're like, I've been waiting 10 turns. Why didn't I get that tile? And that just happens. You know, unfortunately with a game like this, you need to get over the fact that potentially luck can just really be down on you or it could give you a really big swing in points, but more often than not, it seems like skill is the thing that wins the game. And now here's the point where I would tell you one or two negatives about the game. Uh, something that just, I couldn't get over, that it just seemed like a flaw, like why did they design it this way? And I just can't think of any for Corkle. I think it's a really well designed game and the only potential issues I have, I just talked about in the neutral section. So let's move on. So the next section is replayability. I have 15 recorded plays of Corkle, and I've probably played more than that, honestly. The, I first started playing this game before I started logging plays. It's also interesting to note that probably two-thirds of those plays were actually on the iPad. They have a great iOS app for Corkle, and those were two-player games I played asynchronously with Jessica. And But that doesn't take away from the fact that I was still playing Corkle, and doesn't take away from the fact that after 15 plays, I still want to keep playing this game. I think it is a fascinating experience. I enjoy the decisions that you make and it just presses all these pleasurable buttons for me and I could see myself playing this game hypothetically forever. You know, not all the time, maybe just like three or four times a year, but I could see myself playing it three or four times a year, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. This is probably not going anywhere and I think its elegance and simplicity is part of what bolsters that. I know they actually came out with a couple expansions for Quirkle, like they have like a board on the table where when you put tiles down in certain spots, things happen and I have zero interest in those things. I feel like just a big cloth bag full of wooden tiles is all that I need to have this elegant, wonderful gameplay experience that I can see getting played, I don't know, a hundred times or something crazy. So now let's go into player count. Quirkle plays two to four players and as I mentioned before, more than half of the games I've played have been two player with Jessica and I do feel like two player is the best player count. That's for all the reasons that most abstract games are best with two. The downtime is minimized because you take a turn and they take a turn and it comes back to you. Also just the chaos of how much can affect the board before you take your next turn is minimized in a two player game. Uh, also you're thinking about the tiles that you need and you're counting the tiles that are out there and what your opponent might have. If there's only one opponent, it makes it a little bit simpler and easier to hedge your bets and really think about where those tiles might be. All that being said, I do feel like the three and four player games are totally fine. I've very much enjoyed both of those player counts, specifically the four player count. I was worried it might be a little bit too chaotic and um, too much downtime, but I haven't seen that to be the case. Usually those four player games still end by about 50 minutes, which is just about where this game feels like it should be. So two to four players, I highly recommend it. And that leads me into my conclusion. As I just mentioned, I strongly recommend this game. Now, I know that it's not gonna be for everyone, but it really seems like it is for most people. Now, if you don't like tile laying games or spatial situations, you might not like this one. And if you only like in-depth, longer strategy games and you don't really enjoy anything that's lighter than that, you might not like Corkle. But if you're not either of those two groups, you are probably going to really enjoy it. And that's because I've seen people from all sorts of different play styles and ages and groups enjoy it. It's just, it's got so many great little decisions. It makes you feel smart. It makes you do cool things where you get excited when you play a Coracle or you do a, a crazy like 17, 18 point turn. Those can happen and it just, you feel great. It's an awesome moment. You draw the perfect tile or even the angst as you're trying to get the right tile and it just, it's not working, but then something else goes out there and ah, 
Just altogether, I always enjoy playing this game, and pretty much everyone I've played it with has, which means it's very likely that you will enjoy playing it too. If you'd like to see more in-depth reviews like this one, as well as full game playthroughs and vlogs, please subscribe to my channel. Also, as I mentioned before, this review was selected by the voting tier members of my Patreon page. If you would like to vote on one of the reviews I do each month, as well as participate in other ways, please consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash Thanks for watching.